People say the drone crashed into a pile of debris of trees and branches. The battery fell out and did not get wet. However, the drone did go in the river. So I took my cell phone out of my pocket and immediately dove in the river to retrieve it. When I got home, I put it in a very large bag of rice and took it apart so that the rice would go in every orifice and crevice of the drone in order to take all the moisture out as possible. Before disassembling, wipe off all the water on the outside of the drone. Then once you open up the main gimbal housing, dry off anything that you can with a napkin or a tissue before moving on to the next step, which would be immersing it in the rice. The rice is for the water that you can see, which is usually the most problematic. So in this video, you'll see right now, I am showing you how to disconnect the whole gimbal and camera assembly in order to put the rice on the inside of the drone. It's a little messy, but the thing is, it gets all the water out and you can just vacuum the rice out. For safety, I usually don't fly near water, but today I did. Unfortunately, it lost connection with the controller and I lost visual, so I couldn't tell what it was flying. And then I don't know if it was the high power tension lines or what she went down. Now, when you take off these, these are the remotes and the remote antenna and the GPS antenna. Be very careful because if you break these, you're almost SOL. You have to get a, a whole new motherboard, which is one of the most expensive parts of the drone itself. So be sure you take them apart carefully before you take apart this main plastic housing, which is a little scary because it sounds like it's gonna like crack and it just feels like it's just gonna break on you. So I put these little Q-tips to hold it apart on one side while I pry it on the other side. You can use anything you want. Anyway, I just left it like it was. I filled it with the with the rice. I made sure, made sure I buried it completely, and then I tied it tight. And I put in another bag. I put the gimbal and the camera assembly. Uh, make sure either if the camera assembly you don't scratch the lens though. All right. So the next day, or about a little over a day and a half actually, maybe even two days, I took it out, dumped out all the uh, rice, and then I. Gently vacuumed out all the remaining pieces. I used dental picks and tweezers to remove anything that was still in there. Then I plugged it in and fired her up. And to my surprise, she did start right up. Very lucky about that. But it did have a, a, a warning flash that it doesn't usually do on normal startups. So and as you see, like the one the light out. is not on at all. That's when I realized something was wrong. Luckily on the DJI Go app, it did say the ESC error, so I knew that's what was causing it. Here I am just checking out the inside of the camera, making sure it was still dry and there was no, no rice inside of it, and I put that back together. Now since I knew it had an ESC error, I decided to take apart the main housing. By the way, ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller. Like I said before, be very careful with these ultra thin wires and super tiny brass connectors. I did actually, I got th three of them off, but one of them I snapped and it was a major issue. It had to be like, you had to get real fine soldering. It was just the biggest pain in the butt. So you really don't want to do that. You want to take them off ahead of time before you pull the top body off. Accidentally broke. As you can see in this picture, I did break one off and you can see it sitting there. Accidentally All right, broke. so make sure you do not do that when you do it. Accidentally broke that right there, the connection. And this one ripped off, so you have to recrimp them or solder them somehow for the antennas. Beeping that one motor. And this back motor right here, it's not lit up as you can see. It's not lit up and it's beeping. So I'm thinking something's wrong with that one. So on here it says that the ESCM state motor has an error. Which I think might need to be replaced. After searching around online, I found a brand new factory sealed 
ESC Write controller uh, on eBay actually for the lowest price. It was only like sixty dollars with shipping. So I ordered that, and when it came in, it was exactly as described, brand new. And I went to install it. So the first thing you do is you have to remove the old one. Now the old one is soldered on, so I, I tried melting the old solders off, but for some reason it would not melt with my solder. So I don't know if they use some extremely high melt point or what, but I decided just to cut off the wires and then attempt to solder mine on uh, after I strip the edges of it. If you're able to melt them off with your soldering gun or iron, I would do that, but either way, it, it works. I still have to strip the new the wires and get them onto the connection points. All right, also mark them if you're afraid of them getting mixed up. That's why I had this video so I would know what goes to what. But uh, in case you forget, marking them with a little tag might help you. You will need as much of the wire as possible, so only strip the minimal amount off each end and then twist them so that the copper stays together in a tight action. Then I taped down the new ESC to a piece of wood just so that it wouldn't move on me while I'm attempting to solder it. Uh, I also used some medical clamps to help hold them in place. Or you can just use more tape. These little soldering points are the hardest ones because they're they're so tiny they're almost like microscopic. So take your time to do them, and then on the bigger ones it's a lot easier. So if this is your first time soldering, you may want to let someone else do it. But for me, I'm pretty much a novice solderer, but I was able to get it done. Um, just heat up the, the little brass terminal on the motherboard, I mean, the circuit board ahead of time then put the, the wire on top of it and then add the solder and it'll melt right onto it and create good adhesion to it. Um, so as you see I'm just going through with soldering each one using the magnifying glass to help make it easier to see. And then once you have all them on and you check that they're, they're tight and not loose, not going to shake off on you, then you're, you're good to go. At this point you're ready to reconnect all the other parts of the drone that you had to remove in order to access the ESC. I'm just doing a little touch up work here on the back of the wires just to make a double ferrule safe on them. Then you just tuck everything back into its spot, screw it back in to the main body housing. And due to the fact that the wires they supply are pretty short already, I used my own piece of this yellow wire. I just used that to add some length in order to connect to the red power coming off the battery that goes to the ESC. So by doing that, it gave me more length so I didn't have to stretch and work in a close quarters. I was able to have a little bit more length on the, on the wire to be able to solder that together to add to the red one. If at any point this is too fast for you, go ahead and pause the video or slow it down to a slower speed to see exactly what I'm doing. Once you feel that you've soldered enough and you feel that the joints are strong, then you're ready to move on. Tuck everything back into its proper place, replace all the screws so nothing moves around, and then you're ready to reconnect the top and bottom wires before closing the main body housing. Make sure nothing's going to get pinched, put them back in, run the wires up to the antenna, then clip on all the connection points to your main uh, gimbal housing to the main body. Here I just replaced a few of the screws so that I could test it out and make sure it works before I went back and added all the screws back into it. When you want to get up there darkest ground The gravity pulls you straight down Bird's eye view You should grow feathers and see this too